Hello guys and welcome back, in this video, I'm gonna give you 8 tips that make your render looks better, now although this video is targeting beginners with basics and must know tips, even if you're a pro, you might learn something you skipped along your 3D journey, and we saved the top ones for the last so make sure to watch the video, if you're new here, this is architecture topics and we do architecture representation and visualization, and with that being said, let us start with the first one. Obviously if we start something new, it's more likely that we're not that great at the beginning, and the learning process is not easy especially for beginners, with all the information out that gets you overwhelmed, so what you do, stick with the basic as much as you can at the beginning and try to expand your view, and you might ask what that's mean, the answer will take us to the second tip which is the reference images, and the question here is, what is the goal you aiming for in the archvis field, we are trying to recreate reality, so, our best reference would be the real world itself, then before starting any project, whether it's interior or exterior, you need to gather some reference images, so you can create the details as they are in the real world, try getting your camera, your phone, and just snap the environment around you, in the street, or in the office, I usually when I do an interior workshop, I recommend that you surf online for related images, something to inspire from and will for sure give you ideas around the subject you need to create, try to collect details around the thing you like, and by the way we are not talking about a specific software or render engine, you can apply this on any application you are familiar with, and it will help you improving your workflow. This next tip is very easy, but very important and essential, in the real world there's no such thing as a razor sharp edges, so you always need to chamfer your edges, this small thing you do will increase the realism in your scene and also once you go further with the lighting, you will notice that the smooth edges you create react much more naturally with the glossy and specular effects, which you will miss if you keep the sharpness in your scene, easy to do, but also so many beginner artists forget it, so don't be one of them, always cham for your edges. I included this next tip because I get many questions asking me that we try to model a scene, but it didn't look that realistic, and one important thing to check is your assets, your textures and models that you use in the scene you creating play a major role in presenting that scene, so you need to keep them as high quality as possible, it doesn't matter if you do the perfect lighting, without the high quality textures and models, you cannot get realistic results. Now in the good part, there are a lot of websites that offers you a number of those assets for free or a fair price, and most of the site will give you the chance to view the material or model in a 3D viewer and provide you with the different formats and maps to get familiar with it, they are easy to use once you get your hand on them, and will give you the best realistic results out there. Now related to the last tip, once you are happy with the assets you have, there's a problem that most beginners fall in, and that's the out of world scale, meaning that you have a scene where the sofa is way too big or the chair texture is not matching on scale, and this problem both easy to happen and easy to detect by the viewer, the human eye can easily point out if there's something out of scale whether it's big or small from what it's supposed to be so to keep things under control you can easily run a search online to figure out which scale to use on your wood table or the marble floor, and that will become something of a habit once you're custom with it, we won't be getting in details here, however, make it a rule to check the model scale and the texture UVs, those are important factors in any scene. imperfections, and what we mean by that, let us agree that nothing is perfect in this world, you will get dust under your chair or fingerprints on the phone, look at the wall near you and see how many cracks it has, as we said in the last tip, 
our eye is trained to see stuff and one of them is those imperfections, so when you try to avoid that by making everything in your scene sharp and clean, or when you keep the table and chairs distanced from each others by the millimeter, you cannot get realistic results, so little chaos is always needed. No matter which type of software we're using in the 3D world, they all have cameras, and in every program they are trying to mimic the real life ones, so you might need to gather some knowledge around them, and no one need you to be a pro in it, you just need some basics to get by at first, then important tips will come later, so whether it's the focal length, the camera shutter speed, or the framing of your image, all of that will be much easier to fix once you're familiar with those settings, so next time you need to set up a scene for render, look first on those important points, and I see it all the time on people when they do a scene, especially in interiors, they're trying to capture it all in one shot, so they go with wide frames, or too small focal length, and with that they lose the focus of the viewer and the scene won't look as realistic as they need it to be, so keep that in mind. Last but not least is the composition, and what is that you might ask, the composition process is the structure of your image, the positioning of the objects in the frame with a way that the viewer eye is drawn to the most interesting or important area, the focus points that you assign, it's this process of composition that deliver your message and defines your style, so, in a nutshell, there are a lot of rules around this subject and we did explain the most basic and important of them in a previous video which is the rule of thirds, this one rule involved breaking your images into thirds, so that you have nine parts, and the lines will intersect in four points that define your points of interest, the rule says that if you place your objects on one of those four focus points, you will snap a perfect shot every time and this one a basic for all photographers and CG artists that need to mimic real life shots and take a next step toward realism. And that's it, thank you guys for keeping with this video till the end, hope this one been useful, and as always, stay sharp, goodbye.